Good afternoon and welcome back to the Johnson Space Center in Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room where at this hour the Orbit 3 team of flight controllers is on console working hand in hand with their colleagues and counterparts at the Russian Mission Control Center across the ocean in Karolyov on the outside on the outskirts of Moscow overseeing the preparations that will lead to the undocking some 26 and a half minutes from now of the uh, Soyuz MS-04 spacecraft from the Poisk module of the International Space Station, the first uh, leg on the trip home for Peggy Whitson, Jack Fisher, and Fyodor Yurchikin to wrap up their respective missions with a landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan just 39 minutes after sunrise on Sunday morning, which will be Saturday night, our time here in the United States. Everything is going by the book with all of the uh, preparations for the undocking of the Soyuz and the landing preparations in Kazakhstan that we'll talk about in just a moment. Strapped inside the descent module, the centermost section of the three-section Soyuz spacecraft, are the three departing crew members for Expedition 52. In the center seat is the Soyuz commander, Fyodor Yurchikin. To his left is board engineer number one, Jack Fisher, who your chicken launched with back on April 20th, and in the right seat, Peggy Whitson, the record-breaking United States astronaut uh, who is coming home with 288 days in space on this, her third long-duration mission, and 665 days in space, aggregate total, good for eighth on the all-time endurance list at the time that she and her crewmates are touching down at 8.22 p.m. Central Time, this evening, 9.22 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll talk about statistics in just a moment. The uh, crew uh, climbed uh, inside uh, their Soyuz spacecraft a little less than three hours ago. Well, I think we have some video ready of the uh, hat final farewells and the hatch closure, if we could roll that video. This was the scene of the passageway uh, between the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station and the hatchway to the Soyuz MS-04 spacecraft. Uh, final uh, photographs and video taken by the remaining crew that will stay on board. The new station commander, Randy Bresnik of NASA, there in the middle on the red shirt. To his right, Sergei Rozansky, and on the left, Paolo Nespoli of the European Space Agency. There were final photos and there's Whitson floating back inside the Poisk module for a final series of hugs and handshakes followed by her crewmates. Uh, Whitson again wrapping up almost 10 months in space on this flight, an extended mission. Uh, back in uh, the spring, her mission was extended from June until uh, September to uh, enable uh, a three-person presence on board the International Space Station uh, in the wake of uh, Roscosmos, the Russian Space Agency's decision not to fly a third cosmonaut with Yurchikin and Fisher back in April. So a, a uh, six-person uh, crew on board the International Space Station is about to be halved as the departing Expedition 52 crew uh, undocks a short time from now. The undocking is scheduled at uh, 4.58 p.m. Central Time, 5.58 p.m. Eastern Time. The Soyuz uh, will back away uh, to a safe distance away from the station for the deorbit burn of four minutes and 39 seconds that will occur at 7.28 p.m. Central Time, 8.28 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, slowing the Soyuz down by 128 meters per second, enabling it to drop out of orbit to begin the trek back through the Earth's atmosphere with its uh, computers honed in on the landing site in south-central Kazakhstan, just 89 miles to the southeast of the remote town of Jezkazgan. You'll uh, see in a moment uh, the hatch is being closed first on the Soyuz side of the docking interface and then on the station side on the Poisk module. The uh, hatches swung shut uh, at 141 on the Soyuz side at 143 p.m. Central Time respectively. The uh, crew then got down to the business of leak checks to make sure that we had an airtight seal at the docking interface. All those leak checks were successful. The crew is suited up in their Sokol launch and entry suits, again with your chicken in the center seat of the descent module, uh, Fisher to his left and Whitson to his right.
And again, there at 1.41 p.m. Central Time, a little less than three hours ago, the Soyuz hatch was closed. Two minutes later, the uh, Poisk module hatch was closed, and that uh, started the other procedures of uh, placing the Soyuz on autonomous power, conducting the leak checks, and the crew climbing into their Sokol launch and entry suits, and that's where we are, just 22 minutes away from undocking. Once uh, the uh, undocking command is issued, uh, about 90 seconds before physical separation, uh, the hooks on the uh, Soyuz side of the docking interface will open, and springs on both sides of that docking interface will push off against one another to create the physical separation. There will be two uh, separation burns conducted by the Soyuz vehicle. The first one, uh, just about three minutes after undocking, will be an eight-second burn to increase the Soyuz's opening rate by about a half a meter per second. That'll be followed uh, one minute and 20 seconds later by a second separation burn of 15 seconds in duration to increase that opening rate. And then, of course, uh, two orbits later, the Soyuz will be in position for its deorbit burn, four minute, 39 second retrograde maneuver to enable it to drop out of orbit for the trip back into the Earth's atmosphere and a landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan. This view from a balcony camera overlooking the uh, large International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Russian Mission Control Center in Karelyov, outside of Moscow, where the Russian flight controllers are uh, in control of uh, all of the activities associated with undocking, entry, and landing for the Soyuz vehicle. We have an animation that depicts everything from undocking to landing that we can uh, roll right now, and I'll explain all of the uh, particulars of that. The undocking, again, scheduled uh, a short time from now at 4.58 p.m., the Soyuz will back away to a safe distance from the station for the deorbit burn of four minutes and 39 seconds in duration that will slow the Soyuz down, enabling it to drop out of orbit to begin its uh, trek back into the Earth's atmosphere. Just before reaching the Earth's atmosphere, the pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz will take place. The center section, or the descent module, is where the crew is strapped into its seats and uh, protected by the uh, heat-repelling heat shield at the base of the Soyuz spacecraft. Temperatures will build to about 2,500 degrees around the Soyuz as it enters the atmosphere. That will be followed by the command to open up the parachutes, first a series of drogue chutes, then pilot chutes, and then, of course, the large main chute that you're accustomed to seeing. Just a few seconds uh, before touchdown, the uh, Soyuz's soft landing engines, or braking rockets, uh, will be fired one final time, just a second or two before touchdown, and the Soyuz will be home. The target for the Soyuz landing is a uh, remote site uh, some 89 miles to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan, uh, where search and recovery forces belonging to Rosaviatsa and including a team of NASA specialists who have been uh, in Kazakhstan for the past few days will uh, quickly recover the crew and bring them into a nearby medical tent for initial tests. 
At this hour in Jezkazgan, uh, the uh, Russian search and recovery forces and the NASA personnel are uh, in the process of getting ready to leave their hotel for the Jezkazgan airport, where they will board a series of Russian Mi-8 helicopters uh, to fly in sequential fashion from Jezkazgan down to the landing site. Other uh, Mi-8 helicopters will go further uh, to the southwest toward the ballistic landing site that would be in play in the unlikely event that the Soyuz would incur some uh, technical issue that would cause it uh, to land uh, short of its nominal landing site. But everything uh, is expected to be in good shape for the uh, last phase of this mission that will bring home Peggy Whitson, Jack Fisher, and Fyodor Yurchikin to wrap up their respective missions. The uh, one modified uh, item uh, of the NASA Gulfstream jet that typically is based in Karaganda to bring home uh, the American or international partner crew members uh, directly to Houston never uh, was able to leave Houston in time and so the International Space Station partnership showing its mettle uh, was able to uh, have an European Space Agency aircraft fly from Cologne, Germany in the European Astronaut Center down to Karaganda where it is currently uh, located. Uh, the uh, Whitson and Fisher will uh, board uh, that European Space Agency aircraft after they are returned by helicopter from the landing site to Karaganda and that aircraft will fly back to Cologne, Germany. The NASA Gulfstream jet was able to get off the ground in Houston uh, in the wee uh, very early this morning, not the wee hours, but about uh, 8 o'clock this morning central time and it is about to land in Cologne uh, that uh, NASA uh, support team will overnight in Cologne and will take a handoff of Whitson and Fisher on Sunday after the European Space Agency aircraft uh, delivers the crew to Cologne. So uh, the bottom line is, is that through the cooperation of the European Space Agency and the other International Space Station partners, uh, Whitson and Fisher will arrive back in Houston on uh, Sunday night about the same time that they would have anyway had the NASA plane uh, flown all the way to Karaganda uh, without interruption. Again, everything is in good shape. Uh, we might uh, touch on a couple of statistics here. Peggy Whitson, uh, with her record-breaking mission, will come home uh, this evening with 288 days in space on this flight, 4,623 orbits of the Earth, and a mission spanning 122.2 million statute miles. With uh, this mission spanning three increments, Expeditions 50, 51, and 52, she will have totaled 665 days in space on her three missions, just eight days fewer than her crewmate, Fyodor Yurchikin. And of course, she's accrued more days in space than any American astronaut in history. She conducted four spacewalks on this particular flight, now with 10 spacewalks in her career, more than uh, any woman in history, third on the all-time list for most spacewalking time. Your Chicken and Fisher, who launched as a two-man crew back on April 20th, are wrapping up 136 days in space, 2,176 orbits of the Earth, their mission having spanned 57.5 million statute miles. And of course, uh, this was Fisher's first flight, but for Your Chicken, wrapping up the fifth flight in his career, he uh, will come home with 673 days in space, good for seventh on the all-time list, just eight days ahead of Peggy Whitson. The um, weather at the landing site on Sunday morning, Kazakhstan time, is expected to be ideal for the return of Whitson Fisher and Yurchikin. Uh, the uh, forecast is for just a few clouds at 10,000 feet, a visibility of 10 statute miles, light winds, temperature about 77 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a tad warmer than usual on the steppe of Kazakhstan for this time of year, but welcome weather that should uh, hopefully provide good views of the Soyuz during its final descent. Maybe you can send the next command a little bit earlier. Actually, we... Just 13 minutes away from uh, the undocking of the Soyuz MSO-4. Again, uh, Peggy Whitson, Jack Fisher, Fyodor Yurchikin about to depart uh, 
the spacecraft that for your chicken and Fisher has been their home since April and for Peggy Whitson since last November. At the time of physical separation, Expedition 53 officially begins under the command of NASA's Randy Bresnik. Bresnik took over command of the International Space Station during the change of command ceremony from your chicken yesterday. Olympus this is Moscow. Go ahead. Next command at zero hours forty nine minutes. Uh, zero seconds. Yes, we are ready. The International Space Station flying uh, in an orbit uh, inclined from southwest to northeast, 252 miles above the Earth, crossing uh, the west coast of India just south of Mumbai, in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. R8. Correct. Coming up on the 10 minute mark until undocking. It will be R8. And after that, R5 two times. Copy. R8 and then R5 two times. That's correct. One minute left. Thirty seconds to Ivan two command. Ten seconds. Uh, zero hours, 49 minutes, zero seconds, we issued the E2 command. Kadu purge. Copy. And uh, free drift. Copy. Kadu parameters. Normal. Combined propulsion system parameters normal. Do you have a video yet? No, not yet. So now I need to go to the R command. Eight minutes away now from undocking. Sergei, 
and getting ready for the next command. Good. You activated the light? Yes, yes. No, not yet. S-17, Sierra 17 has been sent. Indicator illuminated. Yes, we can see the target. And basically, it's in the center of the crosshairs. Six, seven, six, sixteen. Uh, S sixteen is not illuminated. Can I send the Romeo eight command? Copy. And now Romeo five. And again Romeo five. Why is it narrow angle lens? D7 command has been sent at zero zero hours uh, 50 minutes and 30 seconds. Four and a half minutes away from the issuance of the undocking command that will open up the hooks holding uh, the Soyuz vehicle to the Poisk docking module port to which it has been attached since April. Again, uh, the departing crew strapped into their respective seats in the descent module, Fyodor Yurchikin in the center seat, flanked on his left by board engineer number one, Jack Fisher, Peggy Whitson to the right of Yurchikin, about to begin their trip home to wrap up their record-breaking missions. The International Space Station now flying over southwestern China. Two minutes. Moscow, this is Olympus. Go ahead. Dima, could you check? Once uh, it is freed uh, from the uh, grasp of the International Space Station, the MSO4 vehicle, under your chicken's call sign, uh, you'll hear the word Olympus okay. quite frequently from the Russian flight control team in Karelyov. Well, it looks to be all right now. One minute to send in the D7 command. That's me, Lago. Like a perfecto. Hope, hoping for soft landing. 30 seconds. That was Randy Bresnik wishing uh, his departing crewmates uh, Godspeed and a soft landing just a minute and a half away from the undocking command. Hooks. D7 command at uh, 
zero zero hours the fifty five minutes. Command D seven has been sent. Now D seventeen. This is uh, television uh, over Russian ground stations now uh, in the black and white box with the uh, overlaid crosshair. Uh, that uh, will display the actual back off of the Soyuz at the time of undocking, standing by for the undocking command to open up the Soyuz hooks. Copy. 30 seconds. Ten seconds. Five seconds. D-17 command has been sent at zero hours fifty six uh, minutes. Indicated. And the Soyuz hooks are now driving open, about ninety seconds away from physical separation. Please return uh, the video to the monitor. Rotate the monitor. Mechanical connection indicator is not eliminated. Maybe we should have used uh, AGC mode. Standing by for physical separation. AGC mode will be later after undocking. About two minutes. Indicator is not eliminated. And undocking confirmed at 4.58 p.m. Central Time. We are observing. As the International Space Station and the Soyuz flew 252 miles over southeastern Mongolia. The free drift uh, indicator is not eliminated. Guys, good luck to you on the station. That was Fyodor Yurchikin wishing uh, his colleagues good luck aboard the station. Again, undocking occurring at 4.58 p.m. Central, 5.58 p.m. Eastern, as the station flew over southeastern Mongolia, 252 miles above the Earth. We are observing the docking port. It is clean. Copy. There are now foreign objects on the docking interface. Copy. About a minute away, a minute away from the first of the two separation burns by the Soyuz, it will be an eight-second burn to increase its separation rate by about a half a meter per second. Square and the one square on the right, and the target is uh, moving further from us. Copy. Yeah. 
Olympe, our seventh command uh, is, to, is to be sent. So the thruster will be fired automatically. R7, Oroma, R7 command is sent. Copy. Could you please uh, make it full screen so that we receive the image full screen? Copy in work. How do you see it now? Now we are receiving the image and it is great. I'm standing by for the thrust of firing. Copy. The thruster has fired, the PO has fired. The uh, first separation burn is underway. Eight seconds. We have maneuver. Copy. Now the Soyuz into a roll program to reorient itself for the second of the two separation burns. Yes, the maneuver is done. We are standing for uh, standing by for the GSO of in attitude. Copy. Thirty seconds. About uh, twenty-five seconds away from the second of these two separation burns. This one coming up will be fifteen seconds in duration. So uh, a few seconds until the second burn. We have DPO firing. Copy. Second separation burn underway. You can see the thruster firings in this uh, image from uh, one of the external cameras on the International Space Station. Increasing the opening rate uh, for the Soyuz, where two orbits from now it will be in position uh, for the deorbit burn that will send it out of uh, low Earth orbit on the route home to a landing in south central Kazakhstan. Time cycle, the indicator is not illuminated or pedal repressed is not illuminated. Ivan uh, one is sent. G eight. Or Delta 8. 3 and 8. And the indicator is not illuminated. D, D11 is not illuminated. 17 is not illuminated. G is not illuminated. 11 is not illuminated. Vladimir, Victor, V is not illuminated. We can see the shifting copy. Now we can see the ground, uh, the shifting has been completed. All the commands uh, have been sent. Do you need uh, TV on? Do you want to receive the image, Moscow? Moscow, Olympe. And there's the uh, MSO-4, the uh, Soyuz vehicle with Peggy Whitson, Jack Fisher, and Fyodor Yurchikin on board under the call sign of Olympus. Oh, we can change the filter, make it orange so that it will be easier uh, to look at, at it. Uh, sounds good, Jack. Inaudible. Так, линия шаг-баллон. 
tank pressure 80, 81, and the propellant 482 is the propellant. Fyodor, please send A11 command, Alpha 11 command. Copy. Alpha 11 is being sent. It is sent. We are ready to send the command G or Grigori 4 and TV deactivated. It's a go. In work. The four command is sent. Copy. Over the course of the next two hours or so, uh, the uh, crew on board uh, the Soyuz MS-04 will uh, complete their uh, preparations in the descent module in advance of the deorbit burn. And we'll receive updates uh, from the Russian Mission Control Center in Karyov on the uh, precise location on the ground in Kazakhstan for their landing. Input the settings for descent. We have the flag descent already. The uh, latest coordinates uh, for landing, assuming uh, everything goes as planned, would be 47 degrees, 47.2 degrees north latitude. 69.3 degrees east longitude. That's about 89 miles to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan, where the Rosaviatsa Search and Recovery Forces and NASA personnel are uh, about uh, to depart their hotel within the hour to head to the airport in Jezkazgan and board a, a series of Russian Mi-8 helicopters to fly in sequential uh, pattern to the landing site and form a racetrack pattern around the landing site awaiting the arrival of the Soyuz spacecraft. Wonderful view. Olympia, could you please report the spherical tank pressure? The first one is 181, the second 171, and the propellant is 482. How copy? Copy. 
Soyuz flying 252 miles over the North Pacific Ocean, just south of the Aleutian Island chain. The O2 partial pressure is 210, and the CO2 uh, 1.9, and SR pressure was inaudible. To recap, uh, for those just tuning in, uh, you're looking at the Soyuz MS-04 spacecraft with Peggy Whitson, Jack Fisher, and Fyodor Yurchikin on board, having uh, undocked from the International Space Station just about 14 minutes ago at 4.58 p.m. Central, 5.58 p.m. Eastern Time, two uh, engine firing separation burns having taken place to initiate a, a healthy opening rate for the Soyuz from the International Space Station. The uh, undocking following uh, a very smooth afternoon of uh, pre-undocking preparations with the uh, departing crew saying farewell to the uh, what is now the Expedition 53 crew, Expedition 53 beginning at the moment of undocking under the command of NASA's Randy Bresnik. Hatches were closed uh, at 1.43 p.m. Central Time on both sides of the docking interface to the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the uh, Russian segment of the International Space Station setting the stage for the undocking of the Soyuz that occurred uh, again at 4.58 p.m. Central, 5.58 p.m. Eastern Time.
from the, this point on until the deorbit burn that is scheduled at uh, 728 and 54 seconds p.m. Central, 828 and 54 seconds p.m. Eastern Time uh, to begin uh, the descent of the Soyuz out of orbit for its landing. This is uh, a relatively quiet period for the crew on board, a chance to once again to review their entry preparations and uh, to uh, set the stage uh, for that deorbit burn that will be a four minute 39 second retrograde firing of the Soyuz engines to slow the spacecraft down by 128 meters per second enabling it to drop out of orbit. The International Space Station now under the command of NASA's Randy Bresnik as Expedition 53 is officially underway and the Soyuz vehicle separating slowly but surely from the station about to pass to the east of the Hawaiian Islands.
This is Mission Control Houston, a beautiful view of uh, elements of the International Space Station with the Earth as the backdrop as uh, the station flies uh, just to the southeast of the Hawaiian Islands. That vehicle you're looking at is the Soyuz MS-05 vehicle attached to the Rosviet module, which is on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Just 25 minutes ago, the other Soyuz and the one of interest uh, this evening, the MS-04, undocked from the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the station with Peggy Whitson, Jack Fisher, and Fyodor Yurchikin aboard. Undocking at 4.58 p.m. Central Time, 5.58 p.m. Eastern Time as the station and the Soyuz flew over southeastern Mongolia. Two separation burns uh, now have propelled uh, the Soyuz on a steady course to a safe distance away from the station for the deorbit burn that will be coming up at 7.28 and 54 seconds p.m. Central Time, a little over two hours from now, a four minute, 39 second retrograde firing of the Soyuz engines to slow the Soyuz down by 128 meters per second, enabling it to drop out of orbit to begin the trek back to Earth. So with that, we'll wrap up our undocking coverage. Everything in great shape. The stage is set for the return to Earth of Peggy Whitson, Fyodor Yurchikin, and Jack Fisher just a few hours from now. We'll, we will resume our coverage a little over an hour and a half from now at 7 p.m. Central Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time with all of the developments of the deorbit burn, undock, uh, the deorbit burn, the entry of the Soyuz back to Earth, landing in Kazakhstan and all the post-landing operations at the landing site itself. So we'll wrap up our coverage. Rejoin us, if you will, an hour and a half from now at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. For now, this is Mission Control Houston. Mm -hmm.